Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming today and um, be here. It's a it's a joy to be here again with you guys because uh, this is our home, this is our house, and every time that we come together, it's just great. And thank you, first of all, for the all the support that we have, and we were able to go over there in to Poland and minister uh, people, pastors, and it was uh, it, it was just a great, great experience. It was amazing what God had for us over there. Like I forgot in the Spanish service to share, and Orfelinda reminded me uh, after that the first thing that happened to me in this in this was like a like a a gift. I. Uh, uh, I met a lady that was part of the, the Minister City, City Surf, and this lady has been helping for over more than 30 years, supporting a school in Ecuador and, and for more than 30 years. And, and we were sharing about that, and she, because my husband, she said, where are you from? And I, I told her, I'm from Ecuador, Guayaquil. And she's like, uh, Oh, we were supporting a, a school over there with Pastor Jerry Smith, and I was like, "Which school?" And I and, and she was like, "Centro Cristiano," and I was, "That's my school. I studied there. I started like all my all my uh, middle school, high school. I I went to that to that school, and this and and we." As a student, where we were sponsored by these people because uh, they were paying for our for our tuition, and so I had the opportunity to meet this lady who blessed me, even now that I did like I didn't know her. And we were when we were little, when we were at the school, we were we were writing letters to our sponsors just like dear somebody because we didn't meet them and here in Poland I'm meeting this lady who sponsored me for for all my school years and she was like oh my god I can't believe like God is awesome when the lady was so happy I was so like oh now my letters the letters that I was writing have a face that this is the letter that were, was uh, supporting with other people to this school. And that was the first thing that God, God started start doing in Poland. We have a lot of, a lot of divine appointments and the things Orfelina is going to share with details everything. But for me, it was uh, like, for me, it was more um, how... When I when I was traveling over there, we were praying for God to to show us show me His heart. I really want to see His heart in this time because you know here in the states and through the news, you're watching what you're watching is chaos and destruction and family suffering. And in, indeed, it's happening. That is happening. It's true. A lot of people is suffering. A lot of families are separated from their husbands and parents, and they had to move because they need a, a safe place to go. But what God was showing me is that I am taking care of them. I am taking care of my people. And one of the things that really touched my heart is, and we were, we've been sharing with Jason, this, this has been the main topic of our conversations lately, it's even when you don't understand God's calling in such a time, you don't understand at that moment, but if you obey, he will use you to be a light or and an answer in a time of chaos. That was what God told, him, told me, because when we were there, we met these pastors where they were used to be in Ukraine, pastors from Ukraine, Ukraine, and then God told them, I want you to go to Poland. And then they were saying, but why, God? I, I really don't want to go to Poland. And God told them, I want you to go to Poland. And then years later, 
These pastors are the bridge and the connection to serve refugees from Ukraine. So sometimes we don't understand God's callings and we don't have the whole picture. But God, but God, he wants to use you and to let you shine in a time of chaos like they are doing right now. So we have the amazing privilege to meet this pastor that are like, you just can see the presence of God in their lives. You you see their faces and even, even that they are facing the chaos, they are facing the destruction, you can see the peace in the presence of the Lord in their life because they are all joyful. They are all full of energy when they are talking about how God is using them to serve um the the, re, the the people from Ukraine. So it was just amazing how the the joy of the Lord is their strength. And it's just beautiful. And then how God uses places and circumstances that the devil wants to use it to destroy, God uses it to build and to um, comfort and to restore. Because when we... Um, we will have the opportunity to go to different churches that they answer immediately and respond uh, to the need for this to to be an um, to respond for a shelter that these people need. And immediately, like we are gonna put mattresses in our in our in our in these like areas like this, they were having church, but then after church, they were moving the chairs, and, we, and they were putting mattresses, uh, so people can, can sleep over there, uh, with a joyful heart, like, it was extra work, but they were with, with so much joy, that that, were, that was their strength, so it was amazing, and, and play, like, we went to a school, uh, a theological school that they open their their places also to receive ladies and, and women's and children and in their facilities so they can have a place of shelter and one of the things that I was sharing with Jason is like I know I know that the what they have in their minds at scales they they've been running from the their cities that have been bombed and destroyed, but God had made these peaceful, peaceful places so they can they can rest, they can be in a safe place, and that was just amazing how God protects their heart. And I I was remember of Psalm twenty three when the, when the Psalm David said, even if we walk in the valley of. Uh, even if we walk on the valley of the shadow of death, I'll I'll be I will be with you. And that and and I felt that. I felt that I know these people have been walking in that valley of shadow of death, but God was with them, providing peace, providing a safe place. And not just the place, but the people. You have to see their face. You're gonna see pictures of pastors full of love, full of um, uh, this uh, caring heart. And, and we, when, we were, when we were there, we were just, we, we didn't know Russian and Poland, so we couldn't speak that much. I was using, using my translator to try to communicate with them. And it was a really good thing because I could ask a little bit, a little bit of their, their life, and they were sharing a little bit of their stories. But a hug and a, like a, a, a sincere hug, it was, it was, it was a very important because you can, you could feel their hearts, you could feel their pain, but at the same time you can comfort them with that. So, um, uh, one of the things that I was sharing with pastor is that their heart, they are, they are passing a difficult situation. But their heart is very, they are very, I, I say that they are very stoic. Stoic is the word. Yeah, they are very stoic. They are very, like, we are going to, we are, we, we are going to fight. We are going to stand. We are going to, we are going to believe that God is going to 
take us from this situation and he's going to restore it. And I, I remind, I was, I was reading this verse in 2 Corinthians 4 that for me this describes our experience, uh, describe Ukraine right now. It says, okay, we are, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but no in despair, persecuted, but no abandoned, struck down, but no destroyed. I, I believe that yes, it's happening a lot of things over there, but God, but God, he's moving a great army. He's like the line of Judah, running, protecting their people, and using different countries around in the area, using people for, uh, pastors from different places, and even around, like here in the States, I'm, we are very privileged that we are one of the churches that will could uh, provide with one with one band that it was purchased when we were there and we could see it and it was just amazing how God is moving when we obey when we when we respond in obedience even when we don't understand he will provide and he will provide according to his riches in glory so it was just amazing experience and I want to just thank you all because you gave us the opportunity you you sent us and we were your representatives we 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 were loving through you and 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 I'm just very blessed in having the opportunity to go uh, to go to Poland. Thank you. Good morning, church. Uh, a couple things that I took away uh, from our trip to Poland and. Ukraine was just, uh, as everyone says, uh, said to just to go out in obedience, even though you may not understand. Uh, even if the finances aren't there, um, even if things seem a little out of place, if you take the first step, God will take a step toward you and he'll provide everything that you need uh, to be able to make the mission happen. Um, uh, one of the cool things uh, that we saw was just uh, provision and being able to go there. Uh, thank you so much for y'all's support, but all for y'all's prayers and encouragement. Uh, we were actually able to see um, just the van we were able to purchase for them uh, to be able to take uh, the different necessity uh, items uh, from the warehouse uh, into Ukraine. Um, we also uh, uh, just got to hear the testimonies of how the church in Poland were was able to uh, help the churches, different churches in in uh, Ukraine uh, during this time. The one thing I want to emphasize that Evelyn said was. Um, and it was, it's, it's just phenomenal that God will set you up, even if you don't understand it. It may not be the time right now, but it's going to be a time later on in the future. He already knows and has prepared and made plans for you. And so if things don't work out the first time or to the way you thinking, know that God holds you and your plans and your family in his hands. Um, the, uh, the other thing uh, was just the unity and the bonding of the hearts of the pastors, not only uh, from, you know, the states, California to Dakota to New Jersey to Texas, uh, but also the different pastors from Poland, uh, Ukraine, and Sweden. God just knitted our hearts together, uh, just uh, was... Uh, just the awe how when the brethren get together in unity, there's a blessing and an anointing that comes on that. And I, I'm reminded of Proverbs. Uh, it talks about, you know, uh, good news from a distant land is like uh, pouring cold water uh, 
to a weary soul or taking taking in drinking fresh water and i know that's what we were to them as we loved on them laid our hands and prayed for them when we even got to the, give the the kids uh the refugees hugs and let them know they're not forgotten uh evelyn bought uh got the magic bag, the, the lollipops. Kids can't say no to lollipops. Um, so we got to uh, just see the Lord just minister and encourage. And uh, I was reminded of uh, when um, uh, Israel went to battle and uh, um, um, Moses was getting weary. And he had two helpers that lifted his arms up and that's when they won the battles when the arms were raised and every time it got tired they would lose and so his two companions ended up bracing his hand his hands up and that's what we were able to do with the pastors and their wives uh, over in poland and ukraine is being able to lift him up because just as uh, we have a real battle going on. We also have a spiritual battle going on. Um, and we're in the process of building the kingdom of God. Uh, the last but not least uh, that I wanted to share that really touched my heart um, was just how important it is to be able to share what we see in these stories with you uh, we pass it on to the, you know, our sons and our grandchildren so that they don't forget the things that God can do, not only here in our land, but over in their land as well, because we serve the same God. Um, and so uh, we got to see the van. Uh, we got to hang out with them. Uh, we were able to pray and give words to the pastors and encourage their hearts. And the one thing I learned uh, for me personally, is uh, one of the the translator who translated for most of the time. Uh, he was in charge of a lot of things, and he always had a smile on his face, and just uh, he had a, a a spring of water that bubbled from his heart, which was the spirit of God. And there was an opportunity where we got to talk to him on the side and he was talking about just some of the frustrations that he had worked through and just apologized if you all see this and stuff it's you know a lot of stuff's going on and we couldn't see what was going on but it encouraged my heart because as we face uh, maybe discouragement or frustration in the things that God has called us to do we can still have joy we can still smile we can still press forward it's not over. God is for us. Who can be against you? That was an encouragement to me because I know sometimes I need an attitude adjustment. Um, and if somebody, if God can give strength to somebody else to do what he's called them to do, he can do it for you and I. And so uh, that was one thing I took, uh, that was one of the many things I took away. Uh, the other thing is, just as Paul wrote so many letters to the church, encouraging them to pray for one another, to encourage them to come alongside each other, to love on each other, to strengthen those limbs that are weak, to store up the calls and gifting of God in them, I want to encourage you to keep them in prayer, to keep the families in prayer, to keep the refugees in prayer, to keep the pastors and their wives and their kids in prayer because it's a lot of work. And that is how we can help one another is by loving on them, praying for them, and encouraging them. And more than anything, uh, from our hearts to yours, thank you so much for trusting us to be able to send us out. Thank you so much into giving uh, into this mission as, and being able to help them purchase the van that they need to be able to take those necessities to the people in Ukraine, but also being able to bring the women and children back to Poland. 
uh, keep the men in your prayer, the fathers, um, because it's not easy being separated from the people that you love. And during this time, a lot of families are separated, so just keep them in prayer that God will strengthen them and be their source. Thank you all. Hello? There we go. Mine is more a, a specific testimony of what uh, people in Ukraine were experiencing and the people in Poland, how they helped. <clears throat> there were several buildings, like there was a hotel in, uh, in uh, Poland that was uh, bankrupt, and they began to use that as a place for refugees. Uh, I'm going to be talking to you about this church that uh, they rented a place that used to be a casino, and that's what uh, they used for their church and to also put in some refugees. Uh, this was in a little town called Lubin, or Lubin, or something. Lubglin, something like that, okay? <laughs> it was 40 miles from the border of Ukraine. And uh, this is a church where a lot of the refugees were brought to. It wasn't a really big one. It was a building where they rented the first floor and the third floor. The first floor being the um, sanctuary, and it had eight rooms where they host uh, eight families. They lived there in that uh, first floor. On the third floor, it was um, for about 60 people and it was short term. They were there for three or four days until they found another place where they could go and uh, stay. Some, some of them went uh, to um, West Germany, some of them went to Spain, and some of them went to um, uh, Western Europe somewhere. And uh, some of the went back to Ukraine to a, you know, the, no war zone, but they went back to Ukraine. Uh, they have helped at least uh, more than a thousand refugees in this church. Um, at the beginning, when the war started, uh, they were busy 24 seven, and they were very, very overwhelmed. The church used to pick up offering to help the reg refugees, but there were so many that uh, they were really needing a lot more help than that. Uh, after the war started, uh, a week after, they started getting uh, volunteers, not necessarily Christians, but there were people from Poland that wanted to help uh, the refugees. So that was very uh, welcomed by this church. Um, and then uh, later on, they found out there were other places or centers in the city where they were hosting refugees. And so they started taking some of the other refugees to these places. But even though they took them to these places, they were still uh, in charge of serving them with what their needs were, food or medication or clothing or whatever it is. It was just a place where they could stay. Um, they helped them with hygiene because a lot of the times uh, the people from Ukraine were just taken off to Poland. They didn't pack anything. They would just go and try to get some uh, a safe place to be. Uh, they were very close to the war zones. They, they experienced uh, bombing. They experienced uh, the airplanes flying over their homes. Uh, so uh, some of them didn't have time to pack anything. Uh, they always had uh, someone working in this church where they would receive calls. And uh, the pastor received a call from this person at about 6 in the morning and said, you need to come to church right now. The, there's families here that need you. They need your spiritual help. And so it was four families that had been in their basement for 10 days. 
and they had no food, and they had uh, no toilets. They had to use buckets. Uh, they uh, were experiencing bombing and, and listening to the, the air aircrafts over their house. Uh, this is how bad it is. They had a, a pet, a dog, and they said that within the 10 days that the dog was with them, that dog was scared. His fur turned gray. Just as if, if, if you were us, you know, and we're all stressed up, and we, our hair would just turn gray with all that stress. That's how bad it is. If it affected the dog that way, can you imagine how it affects the children? Sorry. It affected them emotionally. They had, uh, these children had a video and they were watching the disaster outside. They were laughing and the pastor's wondering why are these children laughing at this awful thing? And it was, they found out that it's just the counter behavior, psychological counter behavior, that they were just reacting with laughter, but actually it was a lot of pain and emotion they had inside. Then there were, uh, they had these two teenagers that had come to the facility and they were troublemakers. They were just getting into trouble all the time. And little they, they realized that two days before that, they had lost their parents, they were killed, they had no time to mourn and no time to bury them. So they, they, they are going through some really rough times. And though we see people that were smiling and had lots of love, and they, they have pain inside. They carry their pain inside. They say right now that the, the hardest thing or, or the biggest uh, thing need that they have is trying to find a permanent place for these people. They need new homes. They've lost everything. Uh, they just need new places to live. Uh, and that's just one of the biggest uh, problems that they have right now. There's just too many people. And the people that left to West Germany and Spain and um, what was the other country? Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, are wanting to come back because they are having lots of problems because of the language barrier and their customs. They want to come back to Poland. They want to, they, they feel like their language, it's kind of similar. It's not the same, but it's similar, easier to learn. And their customs are a little bit, um, they match up more to their customs than up in Germany and Spain and other places. Uh, so those people are wanting to come back. Um, in this church that I was talking to you about that, became, that used to be a casino, uh, there was a lady that uh, in Ukraine that had a, a handicapped daughter and she needed to uh, uh, come to Poland, but she didn't have means she had a handicap. Um, I imagine she was a, a, a single mom because they didn't mention anything else about a father. Um, and she told God, well, God, if you want me to stay here, I will. And she was kind of probably just saying that because she didn't know how she was going to be able to come to Poland. And uh, the pastor there in Ukraine told her, look, you need to leave. You need to go to Poland because if you wait too long, you're not going to be able to leave. And there were bombs and, and, and airplanes flying over her home. Well, God sent a brother in Christ to come and speak to her and say, hey, I'm going to the border if you want to come with us. And he, and he took her to the border. And, he, and uh, she knew the pastor of this church because they used to live in the same little village. Um, and so he op uh, welcomed her with open arms. But it didn't stop there. To her, she was so blessed 
that God helped her move to Poland, that she wanted to serve God in some way. So she uh, started cooking for all the people on the first floor and serving the Lord in that way. And, and when uh, the pastor told her that she could help in the church in some way, her eyes got really big and wide open because she was so blessed that she could do something. You know, how many of us, you know, uh, how many of us just want to receive and, and, and don't have the heart to, to give back? And that's what God wants us to do. You know, he wants us to give back. We we're blessed, and we're to bless others also. There was a, a family that was staying in this house as well. Uh, it was the parents and three children. The only reason the father was there is because they had three children. If you have three or more children, they allow the father to, to uh, cross the border. If you're 18 and 60 or under 60, you cannot leave if you're a male. You have to stay. They give you a weapon, and you have to fight. And so a lot of the children are shocked because they, they're crossing the border and they're, they're not allowing their father to cross. And they've seen what happens to those that stay behind. So uh, the children are, are, are hurting for their fathers. Well, this family that I was talking to, you, the, the one with the three uh, children and the parents, they were contemplating, do we go to Poland, do we not? They had a uh, basement, and it was prepared for them to go down for during the bombing and all that. Uh, finally, uh, and, and that it was far. The war was still far from them. They were not experiencing anything. But when it got closer, and they started hearing the bombs, and they started hearing the planes flying over their house, then they decided, we better move. And so there was a the brother of the father that took him to the uh, train station. And the line was like forever. They thought, we, we'd never get out of here. You know, there's just too many people. And uh, they managed. The Lord was with them. They got in the train. The train was packed. It was so crowded. Uh, but they made it. It took them 24 hours to get to the border. And then there were some missionaries there that, that uh, met them and took them to this church in Lebanon. And because I don't know who was sick, but one person was sick, the whole, there were 20 that the missionaries picked up. The whole 20 of them got sick uh, when they got to the church. So they had to provide for them the medicine, pampers, and all kinds of things for them, toothbrushes, clothes, Uh, they also gave us a, a, a testimony about this bishop, Victor Pawlowski. Uh, he was a pastor, and uh, he had a friend, I think, like in New York, and that friend in New York knew someone in Ukraine, and they were needing a place to stay. So they called this pastor, and uh, they didn't have a place for them to stay. So uh, they talked to the daughter, the daughter was living in an apartment by herself, and she moved out and moved in with her parents and allowed this Ukraine family to come live in their apartment. And that was a testimony, because they were not Christians, and they're saying, how can you do this? Why do you want to do this? You don't even know us. You're not scared that our, we would steal from your property here in this apartment? They could not comprehend the love of God in the pastor and the daughter's uh, heart. And that's what being a Christian is about. So we had the privilege of praying for people, praying for pastors and their wives, praying for the people in the different areas that we went, a school and a church and uh, different places. And uh, 
all we could do, I've never been to a place where I don't understand the language. I've always gone to South America somewhere where I can understand the Spanish, but I've never been to a place where I wasn't able to communicate. And I'm not as fast as Evelyn with her phone, you know, I would go, you know, I use my finger, I don't use my thumbs. So uh, all I could do was smile, love him, and hug him. And when I hugged this lady, who was crying after we prayed. It's like I could feel all her pain. It's like God was allowing me to experience some of the pain that she was feeling. It's an experience that I had never felt before. It was just like being imparted in me. They need a lot of prayer. I think that's all I can say for now. Yeah. Don't go away. Stay here. Let me, let me get my hair. All right. Amen. <laughs> Carol, where is Carol? Right here. I need to do the slides. So we're going to show some pictures. First, I'm going to share a text that I... Uh, the Lord gave me for ministering to the pastors, several bishops from the area, and I'll show you in the pictures in a moment, um, and leading pastors that we got to minister to. But Hebrews 6.10 is, is the, the text the Lord gave me for uh, these pastors uh, to encourage them. For God is not unjust so as to forget your work and the love which you have shown toward his name and having ministered and in still ministering to the saints, to the believers. Um, it was a real privilege to come alongside these servants of the Lord. Thank you. Um, it, this was a, a, a very, very emotional uh, trip. Uh, I, for one, had to just continually suppress uh, down the emotion because we could feel the pain of the folks. And it's just very difficult to describe. Uh, so um, let me just jump right into the pictures here. If I click that, does that start it? Okay. Uh, welcome to Warsaw. So I'm going to go, I'm going to rifle through this quickly. Um, this was our first day we're uh, gathering. The gentleman with the ball cap uh, reversed uh, is the medical director, he's a psychiatrist of the American Association of Christian Counselors. Uh, he um, uh, was there on because we the, the group we were with um, City Serve the leaders they they organized this basic retreat or they called it a summit for the caregivers these pastors to come and uh, have a, a, a weekend nice weekend in a hotel with good food uh, the encouragement uh, the, the prayer uh, and then he did us uh, delivered a session. Um, Basically, it then took them into group therapy, several sessions all afternoon with, with several of them praying, praying for them. Uh, we just had the president of the American Association of Christian Counselors speaking in our conference uh, recently. So they're buddies. Uh, so that was really, really good to get to connect with him. Uh, this gentleman is, is a bishop also in the area. He is a pastor, oversees the warehouse and the logistics behind the food and, uh, and medicine and things coming in and going out to Ukraine. Uh, there's no way I could keep up with all the names we met, let alone try to pronounce them. So I'm going to uh, spare you there. That gentleman in the middle is the bishop over the Pentecostal movement of churches, thousands of them, uh, all over Europe. So he was a great leader. His name was Pele. Uh, incidentally, the Lord gave me a divine appointment. Uh, a young woman, um, an American, was also in the country, and ladies from our own unbound, I say our own, in our city is what I mean, uh, ministry here to human trafficking. Uh, they were there starting a ministry for human trafficking. Um, uh, there's one established all in Europe, and they're starting in Warsaw, Poland, and just happened to be there when we were there. Um, and a, a lady joining them, a young young woman, 
uh, drove five hours to catch up with him, meet with him, and meet with us there in Warsaw. And uh, the night before, she had a dream of a large man, looked just like that, named Pele. She pulled out her phone, and here's his name, Pele, and described him and just perfectly had prophetic words from her dream just the night before. So she was shocked because I was praying, we're in the hotel lobby, that these leaders would just show up or have them come back to have breakfast to meet them so they could connect with the pastors for the Ministry of Human Trafficking, which is really bad right now over there. And so it's a, it's a great calling. And all of a sudden, they all showed up in the lobby. And I got to connect them, and she delivered that word. So that's Pele. Uh, uh, the gentleman to the left in the white uh, shirt is the Bishop of Poland. Uh, the one to the right is from Sweden. He's an evangelist, but he's the executive director of CityServe, and he's now based in Be Bakersfield, California, but he's in Europe all the time. So these are the, the key leaders um, there. Okay, that's us praying for that bishop. Uh, that's, that's That green is a, a, a container on a truck that's uh, bringing things in that was shipped over. Picture of, of things in the warehouse here and there. Um, that's a, 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 in the blue is a pastor from Arkansas. So that's one of the states Jason left off where Jason, uh, we were from all over the country, from each coast in the middle and south, all over the other pastors from California that's there. And there's that beautiful couple. <laughs> there's uh, uh, food in, in the kitchen of the warehouse. A uh, picture of clothing. We, you're not, we're not doing justice to all that we saw. It's our group meeting in the warehouse, uh, getting briefed on everything they were doing there. Uh, that's that pastor bishop for that area that was um, uh, managing all the logistics. That's the uh, truck being unloaded. Um, it's in front of another truck. Uh, there's the first shot of a van that, that we were able to purchase, and uh, we're, we're prayer, prayerful about maybe getting another one. They've gotten 10. They'd like 10 more. And um, they were so grateful and moved that when we heard you all responded the way you did, uh, there's the van again. Orphe was taking so many pictures, she's not in a whole lot of them because she was taking them. <laughs> so there she is. Uh, there's the van and the leaders, the main leaders, Pele, uh, over Europe. The, the Swedish guy, the executive director, uh, the bishop overall of Poland, and they wanted a, a picture there. There we are again, city serve. I wanted to get a marker and write Waco on the white part right there. There's the beautiful van. And again, they're taking medicine and supplies and food, blankets in, women and children out, and they're running 24 seven. The vans do not stop. Uh, they have them, they've taken them down into Hungary, different ports of entry cross land crosses into so it's just a huge need uh, they didn't let me drive it i was trying to uh, uh, just another shot of the kitchen there uh, people were sleeping up in the warehouses where as well there's uh, books for children bibles bibles um, some of the yummy food they were preparing the ladies, uh, refugees, staying at the warehouse, cooking uh, there. There's the outside of the warehouse. Uh, it's inside a church. Uh, and again, uh, at the beginning, in that place, not so much now, but in the beginning, everybody's on the floor. They move everything out of the way for that. And then once a week or twice a week for services. Um, this is the pastor of that church. Uh, on the right, and they actually live upstairs as well, so they're supervising everybody they're taking in. That's with the Bishop of Poland. Um, that's, the, that's the pastor from uh, Arkansas. That's upstairs. And uh, again, here's an office, but they, they put a bed in there. Uh, again, they put bunk beds up in every classroom everywhere. They, in every corner of space. That's in front of uh, the church uh, there. 
behind there a safe house, um, walking to where they have another little storage area. That's the safe house there. Inside the safe house, they, again, bunks put up everywhere. Little corner, little eating space. Uh, I think that was a hallway originally. A uh, little kitchen area. Well, those, again, those are refugees uh, cooking. Uh, not wanting to be in the picture, wouldn't turn around. <laughs> That's her friend. Looks like she's making uh, Mexican sweetbread to me, but, you know. <laughs> There they are, the ladies. We got her to look. Again, they, they're suffering PTSD. I mean, there's no question um, the hell they're, they're, they're going through. And like what was said earlier, here's kiddos that wouldn't come down, but they're looking through the window at the strange people below. Another fellow. That's me hugging the pastor. I just finished praying for him. Oh, there's a picture of me praying for him. Um, uh, we shared with you that Ivanka Trump, uh, at the last minute, joined uh, our group. She has been um, uh, a huge donor to City Serve, the ministry. Uh, unbelievable. Well, they actually published it. Um, uh, she provided over a million meals and five huge cargo planes full of supplies. That's Iv just Ivanka. So we were able to get reacquainted with her. Um, I had, you know, had gotten to know her during my trips to the White House before. Um, so she fortunately remembered that, and that was sweet of her. Uh, let's see. This is at uh, the uh, the this Bible School. Um, it's one of the ladies that Orphe prayed prayed with. They were also very emotional in receiving uh, from us. She played the guitar for the kids. Then they had a there's a, a therapy session where they were coloring and talking about their feelings. Um, Evelyn using her translator. <laughs> um, really impressed with the compassion uh, Evelyn was showing in working with the young women. Uh, the kids, uh, this, this brother held the uh, chords on the guitar and the kids were just strumming. <laughs> but he kept changing chords and it sounded pretty good even though they were just banging away doing that. Uh, it was quite impressive. It's us praying again and again. Again, that's other place. So this, this lady, her name is Olga. Um, another picture we'll see of her son. His, his eyes were very, very drawn in. Uh, you just see trauma in his face. She, they came with nothing. And it, you, you can't hardly tell it, but she is seven months pregnant. We came with nothing. And the staff told me, um, by the way, there was a, a husband of uh, a, an assistant director is from Bolivia and immediately saw us and started speaking Spanish to us and we had a great conversation with him. They're going to throw her a surprise baby shower because she has nothing. So we were able to, to sew into that as well. Well, she's due August 5th and she's going to have a little girl and they're going to name her Sophia. I said, well, our youngest uh, son, his wife, is going to have a baby girl July 25th, 10 days prior. And her name is Sophia. Mm -hmm. So we had a great connection with her. She has brilliant green eyes that really popped. Um, but again, you know, they, she came with nothing. That's the assistant director and, and her husband who is from Bolivia. Um, That's, that's her again, Olga. Orphe praying with the children, kiddos, precious, precious children. It's just amazing. Children are children wherever you, you see them. Uh, that's the outside of, uh, oh, no, that was in the old square in Poland. 
couple of snaps of that. Uh, this is outside in Lublin, again, close to the border, where the casino went out of business during COVID. So that's a positive, I think, at least in my book. Um, and I did not go into Ukraine, uh, primarily because Diane was praying that we, I wouldn't go. Uh, it wasn't you? Somebody was praying. Lupe. Lupe was praying that, that we would not go into Ukraine. So, so uh, only the organizers of the trip went in. Getting in is not the problem. Getting back out is, is the problem. Uh, and refugees, literally, um, they told us, we're in line to get out two and three days with no food and water, just waiting, trying to get into Poland or wherever they were trying to, whatever border country they were trying to get into. So that's outside the church where the, the casino um, got converted, got saved. <laughs> Same thing there. Here's inside the casino. You see that casino carpet? Uh, there's the little sanctuary uh, spot that they did. There's uh, unbelievable chandeliers above. We should have taken pictures of that. We probably did. We took thousands of pictures. Uh, the women and children that uh, we ministered to. Um, that's a, a gentleman who did come because he had uh, three or more kids he, uh, in his family unit. That's the bishop again and a lady telling her story. The pastor of that church, uh, I got to pray for him. Um, some of the ladies, the refugees. And then with, and then every corner around, they just put up curtains to separate families. And you'll see that uh, in that place, I think, uh, or if you said they had eight family units uh, in there. Yeah, that's the, the lollipop lady who was <laughs> famous before we got done uh, with all the children giving lollipops away, doing her translation. There, that's back in the converted casino. And these are big carnivores in Poland. Yeah. They, they set this, uh, this huge meat tray in front of us on our way back to uh, Warsaw. Of course, I didn't eat any of that stuff. It's terrible. <laughs> I shouldn't be lying in the pulpit here. I'm sorry. I confess I, I ate. I, I ate it. The, the, the Lord jokes with us. Okay. Thank goodness. Okay. Uh, these, these pictures are showing basically um, the movement of supplies with some slides that they were showing us and the feeding stations that they had. Lots of feeding stations all over. We, we didn't come close to touching all there was to touch. Um, uh, again, again, they're doing Bible studies. Tons of people coming to faith in Christ. Um, uh, here's the effort of the workers. We pray for Ukraine uh, or, or pray for Ukraine, many of the workers. Uh, this is the Bishop of Moldova uh, that came over and we prayed for him. Um, and says church has become multifunctional. See the mattresses there, just rows of them. Uh, uh, that's to, and up above those pictures you can make out. Uh, they, the, the pastors in Ukraine now have become the city and community leaders. Yes. Okay, uh, across denominational lines, the pastors are the leaders. The the mayors that are left, other civic people, they're just adult, they don't know what to do. So anybody with some organizing skills. Uh, begin b begins to raise up, and and they the pastors are the heroes right now, in this war torn areas. Um, so as I was praying for the bishop of Moldova, uh, this the bishop of Poland is again that's him on on this far side and uh, on that side with the watch on the wrist. That's the. Uh, guy from Sweden who uh, is the executive director of CityServe that now lives. But he's had a massive evangelistic ministry all over Africa. Um, unbelievable, a uh, huge, huge ministry. Uh, that's a bishop from Kiev. Uh, and by the way, calling it Kiev is a creation of the American news media. They all say Kiev over there. 
just they, they laughed at that, by the way, that Americans were calling it Kiev. They don't do that. Um, so this this uh, real little guy, uh, tiny guy. Um, uh, you can see the two American pastors. The guy over here, we, we look a little different. Uh, this is, uh, again, him and his wife, uh, the bishop that did a lot of the translating, most of the translating. Um, more prayer, you see Jason in that shot. Um, that's the, uh, the Christian psychiatrist uh, in his session. Um, and then I got to preach. Uh, and we had miracles. Uh, we had uh, a man whose knee was healed and a lady that had chronic hip pain, a pastor's wife. Uh, Evelyn and uh, Orphelinda prayed, were praying for her. And we went to eat. She just was stunned that all her pain was gone. She's walking, walking normally. Um, which I, I told them stories from here that we expect miracles every week and we see them just about every week. And especially the one we just shared, we just had uh, a couple, right before we left, um, I shared with you on Wednesday and on Sunday, we were praying for a woman, a local lady here. I went to a local business to go pray, middle of the day, and um, she had several ailments, uh, one of which was a tumor, uh, and she uh, but, but ailments that she'd been suffering for, for weeks now. And um, I won't go to specifics on air, but uh, uh, God healed her of, of one specific one. It was a difficult uh, one on the spot. And then while we were in Poland, her boss, who invited me to come pray in the office, called that she had just hung up with her, that she was hysterical at the doctor's office. Because the tumor that they had biopsied a week before was gone. Amen. The doctors were flabbergasted, didn't know what to say to her, what to do. Because you don't biopsy something that's not there. Okay? It was there. Uh, like other tumors we've seen disappear. Right, Carol? Amen. Yeah. You know, having a tumor disappear is not hard for the Lord. Amen. So I was giving all these testimonies, and we had healings there. Uh, saying and teaching the word testimony means do it again. If he did it once, he'll do, he can do it again. And, and like I tell you all the time, people are not going to get more sick because we pray for their healing. So what's the risk? Pray. Okay. Ask God to heal all the time. Never shrink back. So anyway, uh, so um, let's me preaching up a storm. I think we're almost done here. There's the bishop with his lovely wife and the other beautiful young couple that was traveling with us. <laughs> that's the, um, that's Pele, uh, the bishop. He didn't look like a bishop all over all of Europe, right? But he has 16, <laughs> 17,000 churches he, he oversees. Uh, that's the data point that, uh, that I shared with you uh, where they actually publish what she has done uh, in terms of the cargo planes and the million meals and the dollar amount. I mean, it's, they published it. Uh, the city served it, so I guess it, it's public information now. Okay, just a couple of more here. Uh, that's somewhere. I don't know where that is. And that's at a sandwich shop we stopped, uh, and it's kind of like a rotisserie thing going around. They just cut some, shave the meat off and make you a sandwich. Uh, it looked like uh, wrapped up in a tor big tortilla to me. That's what I called it. And then here's our photographer. Uh, <laughs> thanking the Lord that Coke Zero is everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So um, we're going to stop uh, there. Do you want to add anything to any of the pictures? Yeah. Oh, good. All right. All right. Well, then um, if you'll hand that back to Carol. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for your support. Uh, we are prayerfully considering um, another van, seeing how phenomenally useful uh, they are, how they're being put to work, how many people are coming to faith in Christ. There is a huge revival that's broken out in Ukraine and in Poland. And I believe it's the seedbed for all of Europe. Uh, and I pray it in infects this country. Um, so getting back, it was it was really tough uh, emotionally. I, it was harder on me than I um, 
realized uh, processing things and in private conversations I had uh, over there. To come back to um, seeing children that look like our children. Um, being cut down. And uh, in Ovalde. So that, that made it for a pretty tough week. Um, uh, fielding calls from people in the area and uh, feeling helpless, you know, wanting, you know, want to go to Uvalde. <laughs> uh, but obviously they've got plenty of support down there. But so we, we're at a critical time in our country. Um, and uh, I just submit to you as, as a shepherd, this is not a time to attack political opponents. Uh, it's a time to pray. Pray for those that are suffering. Uh, don't get baited into fights and arguments. Uh, pray. Um, the arguments will be there in a month. And it will state the case and go be there. Uh, let, let's, let's, uh, um, let's just be calm. Focus on the Lord and pray for those that are suffering, whether it's in Ukraine or here. Um, uh, the pastors got very, very emotional. Uh, praying for them. They, they are emotionally spent and drained from uh, compassion fatigue and, and uh, just pouring their lives out. Um, when we got done, at, and I preached in the middle of it, we did a prayer time like we do here. Anybody that was in pain, we prayed for them. Then we just prayed for them as couples that came up. And um, every, uh, every pastor cried in my arms. Um, every single one, um, and just needed, and they were all, I, I call them young, you know, pretty young, and they all just needed a hug uh, and this retreat time. So it was really, really worthwhile to go and invest in them. Um, we weren't moving groceries from one truck to another, but we were doing uh, emotional and spiritual uh, nurturing uh, to these caregivers who are also suffering, I think, PTSD. Uh, so with that, we're going to pause now and uh, worship the Lord in our giving as we conclude our time this morning. Thank you for coming. Thanks for being here. If our ushers would come on up, uh, we want to we wanna do that this morning. Uh, Brother Randy, could I prevail upon you to pray over this offering? Could you do that, please? Father, we come to you this morning. We just bear ourselves before you, Father, and ask that you show us what it is you would have us do. Fill us with the compassion we need for these people. Father, one of the things you've been showing us recently is that for us to be filled, it's not enough that we need to be overflowing. Overflowing with your spirit that it will pour out and touch others. I pray, Father, that that's what happened on this trip. That your spirit full overflowed and touched the people there that needed to be touched. I pray, Father, that you would use these gifts, these tithes, these offerings to accomplish your needs in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. 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 I'm sorry I don't normally do the offering, so I forgot everything we're supposed to say. <laughs> forgot. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, we have the thing here, give online. Thankful for everybody watching. Uh, we appreciate that. Amen. So so if, if you're inclined we'll, uh, and want to talk about uh, another van, uh, uh, let, let's talk about that. Um, I, I'm praying about it. I, I think it's probably something we'd like to try to do. Uh, we may not get the whole amount, but we can give toward um, a gift that will keep on giving. Okay, uh, Carol, why don't you come on out and uh, close us out? 
as you normally do. Okay. Oh, and I, I, you've seen me hobbling I, I, just to give you the report on my knee. We're waiting on insurance approval so I can get an MRI done. It'll be a couple of weeks. I won't say the uh, HMO, but it's in, within their own system. And it said it'd take two weeks for them to decide whether I can have an MRI or not. So, uh, so I want to keep hobbling around, uh, but you know, I'm believing for complete healing. It, it, it gave me fits. I had a lot of pain climbing stairs and doing things, and I stopped a couple of times. and just said, ah, you guys go ahead. I've seen enough bunk beds and mattresses. I'll stay down here. Uh, just so I know, because people quickly rush me and want to pray, lay hands on my knee. Uh, so I'm just, thank you. Uh, but we're waiting. Uh, I'm doing something about it now, uh, thanks to my wife pushing me. So we're, 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 we're waiting. We're waiting on that. So it's on the, healing is on the way. Wow. It's so amazing um, that Pastor and Orpha Linda have that opportunity and Jason and... So I'm wearing my patriotic tie uh, and they're not patriotic tennis shoes, but the, that's why I'm in tennis shoes because my team is playing so I'm not wearing my favorite boots. <laughs> and, you know, I'm just uh, reminded of a, a couple of scriptures um, one from Philippians 4 that says, you know, when we give in to those things, it's credited to our account in heaven. And also, when we, uh, one from 1 Samuel, when David went out into the war zone, he left people behind to take care of the baggage and to take care of things. And so those people share as well. So as, as people who have given into their trip or into the van, you all are, that's all credited to your account and you receive the benefits of that in heaven. So it's just, a, it's just wonderful that we get to participate in these things, right? Amen. Well, stand up and let me bless you. God bless you, Christ the King. God bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you. God bless you coming in. God bless you going out. God bless you in the cities. God bless you in the fields. God bless you to find favor with God and man. God bless you. What can you do? I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm blessed coming in, and I'm blessed going out. I'm the head and not the tail, and it makes me want to shout. Woohoo!